What's happening guys, girls, everyone else in between? Shane Saunders back again with another video log. This time post um, week week 9? Well, no, sorry, pardon me. Week 8 of Dana White's Contender Series. The last one of the, of, the, of the series. And I've actually been away in Brussels. I didn't really get much of a chance to put anything up on the site with regards to UFC 227 and the fallout of that. The podcast is still going to be recorded. Myself and Craig are going to do it on, on Friday. I guess I'm going to start with that, really. And Wow, I mean, you, you miss a little, you miss a lot on MMA. Crazy, crazy weekend. Uh, more so with Demetrius Johnson fight. Now, to be, to be honest with you, a bit of a caveat, I've only watched the top two fights of the card. I'm yet to catch up on the rest of it. I'll do that. We'll have an in-depth discussion on the podcast when myself and Craig record it on Friday. Hopefully that'll drop Friday afternoon and you can get all of our thoughts on the entire card. But starting off with, with Demetrius Johnson and Henry Cejudo, well, I mean, what a, what, a, what a fun fight that was. Considering what we got in the first fight, over within you know two minutes or, or whatever it was in the, in the first fight, Henry Cejudo eats a lot of knees. And I think we were kind of worried that he might actually, you know, be out of the first round again, but more so due to an injury. He looked like his left leg buckled a couple of times, whatever way his stance was. First, the initial when I thought uh, he, he was hobbling, I thought it was the way his stance was, the way he was moving. I thought he might land on it awkwardly. But obviously, in the post for the interview, Cejudo said that it was actually a, a low calf kick that really, really hurt Cejudo. And yeah, it, it looked like he was about to go out, go over his ankle, and just, just have to call it a day. But man, he persevered. A really, really tight fight. I thought. Johnson won the first round. I thought Cejudo won the second round. I thought when he when he took him down, was able to cement the position for 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 that amount of time. It was really really good. I thought Johnson came back, was able to win the third round, and then I think um, Cejudo won the fourth and the fifth on my card. It was such a close fight, though. I mean, it was such an entertaining back and forth, edgy or sea kind of stuff. Both guys were trading kicks. Cejudo was able to manage a few punches on the counters, clinched really, really well, took t- took Johnson down three or four times, controlled him really for f- two of those four times, and really just cemented his position on top, and it was a really, really good performance. I had a, the, 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 the fight 48-47 in favour of Cejudo. Such a close fight. Really, really close fight. Really enjoyable fight. Obviously, Cejudo now wants to go up a fight well, who who the the winner of T J Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt? Obviously, we know T J Dillashaw beat Cody Garbrandt in the first round, first round knockout, crazy. And um, I was convinced that Garbrandt would be a different fighter, um, in in this second fight. Basically, it, it tells a lot about a fighter when he does very little media work, is very kind of calm, composed, different demeanor. Didn't get emotionally involved this time around. Didn't even compete. Uh, he didn't even showcase anything in the, in the open workouts and was able to, you know, just just really kind of sit back and just not give any tells away. But Dillashaw came out and then dragged him into a war. He dragged him into a place that he shouldn't have gone to, which is, you know, what happened in the, in, in the first fight. You know, it was exactly the same thing. Garbrandt's able to clip him, sends his blood, moves forward, gets caught with a counter, and that's exactly what happened this time out. Garbrandt's able to get the first round finish and, you know, basically Garbrandt goes back down to pecking order. Dillashaw continues on his reign as a bantamweight champion. Just a, just a wild, <laughs> wild, wild kind of night. Now, I haven't, like I say, I haven't watched the rest of the fights on the card yet. I plan to do so over the next couple of days. Take my time with it, digest it, talk with the podcast at length with, with, with Craig. Obviously, we have the, you know, the little matter of Conor McGregor and Khabib uh, Nurmagomedov October in Vegas for the lightweight championship so that should be that should be a lot of fun and also a few other bits and pieces to discuss Nate Diaz especially in order to tie right against the UFC but really the crux of this video as always every week is to discuss Dana White's choosing like contender series the fights who gets contracts and what have you so I guess really what we'll start with like we always do is the contract winners We'll talk about their fights and then we'll talk about the other fight fights and the fighters who may not have got contracts. So three fighters were awarded contracts last night. Uh, five finishes, again, three fighters awarded contracts. So I guess we'll start with Bobby Moffat and Jacob Kilburn. 
uh, Bobby Moffat getting the contract. He got a really, really nice Darce choke. It was a bit of a bit of a one sided contest in truth. It wasn't really a huge thing compared to the fight. I mean, Kilburn looked looked a bit overawed as soon as uh, as soon as Moffat took him down. He sunk in a really really beautiful uh, Darce choke and, and and won the fight impressively. Just to, he didn't even really set it up with anything. He just went straight in for it, and it was really really gorgeous gorgeous finish. And it was the first of of two. Uh, Dar Stroke finishes on on the night. Really, really enjoyable. Really enjoyed the fight. Bobby Moffat is now in the UFC. Right, there wasn't really a whole lot to talk about. Really, other than the technique was beautiful. The way he finished it was really, really nice. I, I enjoyed it, and we'll we'll see what what he what he can produce next. Uh, moving quickly along, I guess. Um, and I apologize. I'm gonna absolutely butcher uh, this guy's name. Uh, Kennedy and I'm just gonna call him Kennedy. Uh, he was able to beat Dennis Bryan with some really, really, really nice. Uh, vicious and short elbows um, beautiful performance Kennedy was just peppering him on the outside used the reach advantage really really well was kicking left and right inside leg kicks high kicks low kicks everything you name it and once Bryant shot in for a takedown usually you know you'd say don't don't knock elbows you know in the clinch because you, you, you're not defending as such and you, you're more prone to be taken down but Kennedy ignored all that Real book out the window, just completely just just nailed Brian with about four or five really vicious elbows. I think on the third or fourth one, Brian just went out, heard the and pulled them off him, and just said that was that. Kennedy now gets it. He looks really really good. I liked what I saw. Like a nice calm composed fighter with some really devastating finishing power, and so he gets a shot in the in the, in the UFC. And congratulations to him. It was a really really nice performance. Not sure where Bryant goes from there. He 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 got badly badly beaten up in there by by Kennedy, who really just 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 put it on him and really showcased why he belongs in the UFC. Uh, moving on, uh, Devontae Smith had a really nice win over Joseph Lowry. Just really, you know, it was it was it was it was a fun fight. Um, Lowry came out, landed some really nice bombs on Lowry, who you know just. <laughs> he he did didn't look too comfortable in there. He he got he got nailed with a couple of bombs, and the, 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 like most of the fights on the card finished early, and it, it was really really impressive. I, I like what I like what I saw. Um, nothing too major, like too technical about the fight. Really, it was just a really nice fight ending sequence, and he he gets a shot in the UFC, and. Before we get on to a bit of a tirade, Greg Hardy is also on the card. Um, we'll get we'll get into his fight now in a second. Obviously, he has a developmental contract. He was on the first episode of this season, and it was you know impressive knockouts and what, and what have you. But we'll get on to him now in a second. But for a fighter who didn't get a contract, um, was Alex Gilpin. He was able to beat J.R. Cochran, um, in a really interesting fight. It was a nice. Interesting, nice, nice come from behind win uh, for Gilpin. So Cochran had had him badly hurt on the feet. Gilpin looked out on several times. Gilpin in the first round was able to take Cochran down, try to sneak in an anaconda choke, then switch to a Darce choke. But they, the round ended with, with Gilpin on top, and you know he sensed a bit of blood there. Second round, Gilpin took the initiative, took Cochran down after eating a couple of bombs, uh, was able to sink in a really, really nice Darce choke. And I'm surprised that he didn't get get a contract award to him, like he was true, he went through a fight, he got beaten badly in the first round, he was able to come from behind, show good determination, good heart, to be able to come back in, and, you know, it was just, just a really nice performance, and I'm, I'm, it's a shame that he, he didn't really get to, you know, showcase his skills further in the USC, but you look, you never know with these guys, they could come back next year, or they might, you know, be put into like a short notice fight. You just, you just don't know. But it was a real, I thought it was a really nice performance from Gilpin. Anyway, I think it'd be, it's a shame that he didn't get a look in. But sure, that, there it is. Moving on to the kind of crux of my issue, really, this week. I mean, again, I wrote a, a piece, um, or a portion of, of a comment in in a, my first recap in the first week of the NMS Tuesday Night Contender series about Greg Hardy. Now, obviously that night he, he was able to blast through his opponent, was given a developmental contract, basically they're going to work with him in the UFC Performance Institute, 
working him with a few things, asked him to come back again, showcase, you know, what what he has to offer. The guy's only two and zero in his MMA career, you know, post last night's victory over uh excuse me, Tobias Gordon. Basically just walked through him seventeen seconds, nailed him with bombs, fight was finished. It wasn't really much. Uh otherwise other than we know Greg Hardy's got explosive power. But here's here's the kind of crux of my issue. Again, it's really, really uncomfortable to watch Greg Hardy. If you don't know Greg Hardy's story, basically he's a former NFL player and was charged with assault, uh, domestic abuse um, of his then partner. Um, she didn't show up to court one time. I think the charges were kind of dropped. He was charged with something. But he n- never saw jail time, um, you know, did these horrible things. And to kind of watch him go into a cage and beat up people, it, it, it's for really, it's really uneasy. And I, I say this as a, in, in a weird kind of, you know, way that I watch combat sports a lot. And I've watched thousands of UFC fights, thousands of MMA fights in general. Thousands of combat sports, boxing, everything, you name it. And... But when it comes to somebody who has these kind of charges against them, it's, it makes for really uneasy viewing. Mainly for the fact that you're looking at a guy who's going in and demolishing guys, you know, throwing hands or whatever. And you can't help but think, well, you know, this guy has these charges against him, assault charges. I mean, you, you kind of get a picture of your head of his partner, you know, is, is this how he did it? You know, it's it's, it's it's just very uneasy. And what really gets my goat afterwards is Dana White coming out after in a post-media scrum, sorry, post-fight media scrum, and says that anyone who's calling out Greg Hardy, you know, has no, nothing better to do. Something, something to the extent of that. Basically saying, you're always going to get these guys. We haven't received any criticism, apparently. That's what Dana White says. Hasn't received any criticism with regards to... Greg Hardy says anyone doing it you're always going to get the usual trolls you the usual blah 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 but it would be remiss of people not to not to call it the UFC for for promoting this guy for basically saying oh this guy deserves a second chance I believe that a lot of people deserve second chances you know in, in anything they do but when you have someone who who has been convicted of a of, of a Domestic abuse charge, um, you know, violent crimes, and put them in a cage. It, it it's it, you need to question your moral standpoint on that. It it's it's awful. It it was disgusting to look at. I could I. I watched it for the sake of just watching it, just to see, more so from the aspect of, of covering it, but it, it was it was it was tough viewing for me. I I didn't like it. I I, I can't I can't abide by it. I believe people deserve second chances, absolutely. Dana White saying, what, you don't want the guy to work again? Look, listen, absolutely, he might change his life around for sure. But you'll always have that little image, that little picture, that niggling thing in the back of your mind whenever you watch Greg Hardy fight, to say, is this what he had, he did? What is going through the victim's mind if she's watching that? Or sees the, a video online, she's browsing one day, oh, Greg Hardy, knock out, blah, 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 blah. How is she going to feel in all this? How is her family going to feel in all this? There's redemption stories and then there's just this. This is crass. Absolutely crass. And look, as I said before, I'm not a journalist. I'm, I do this part-time as a fan. But it will be remiss of me not to mention it. Just to, to, to lay it out there. You know, it's, it's disgusting. And and Dana White's comments really irked me and really annoyed me. You know, I'm a fan of combat sports, but I'm not a fan of people who, who who do that. You know, look, whatever about kind of drug use and things like that. I I find those stories absolutely fascinating when you find someone who's on the brink, who's able to bring themselves back. You know, that's a redemption story. You know, somebody who goes out, beats up women, then beats up people in the cage. That's not a redemption story. That's just sick. It's it's glorifying. You know, it's it's glorifying it in my opinion. 
But the thing that really annoys me most is that the, the narrative behind Greg Hardy is that I like Brandon Fitzgerald as a commentator on the UFC. I really like um, Paul Felder. I think they work really well. And I don't know if this is producers in the air of, of these guys saying, you look, you need to have this narrative in regards to blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't know. But when they're talking about Greg Hardy and they're talking about him as if he's atoned, you know, for everything he's done, it's just sickening. It's, it's hard to listen to that nonsense. I can drown out the kind of nonsense sob stories they might have in these video packages or whatever. Bellator do it a lot and kind of, hey, you know, this guy was able to do this, blah, 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 blah. You know, I don't, I don't mind about all this stuff. I, I love a story in MMA. I, don't, I, I love a kind of redemption story. This is just sick glorification. Um, and and I, I personally just feel uneasy about watching Greg Hardy. I, I don't want him to be involved in fighting. I just... Anything else I wouldn't necessarily mind, really. It's just when you're watching someone go in there and, and knock people around, it, it, it's it's disgusting to me. It's just, I'm, I'm ang- I was angry about it. I just... I was angry about Dana White's comments about it. You know, at the end of the day, this guy did a horrible thing. And for his victim to be completely... Rem- obviously, constantly reminded... About what he did by going out there and saying, hey, this guy got to knocking out this guy in 17 seconds, 20 seconds. Great, he's going to be in the UFC knocking people out. Like, how do you cheer for that? How do you sit there, buy a ticket for a fight like that and cheer? It's, you know, morals really should should come into question really about it. It's, it's, it's frankly disturbing. And I, I don't know. I, I, I can't get on board. I personally probably won't watch Greg Hardy fight in the UFC if he's in there. I'll just skip over a fight. I, I just... I can't. I'll catch a new story about what happened. I, I, I can't sit here in good faith and, and sit here and, and say, wow, what a what a guy, what a performance. I, I can't. Not with a guy like that. I just couldn't. Uh, it's just... It's just irking me. It's just... I know I'm going on, on a bit of a tirade and should really be with the guys who got the contracts and, and what have you. And it's been a great, great season of Dana White's choosing like contender series. But this is disgusting to me. And... I hope the UFC just see sense because I feel there's going to be a lot of backlash. Even just looking on social media, there's a lot of backlash about Greg Hardy. So to say they're not getting any is a barefaced lie. And personally, I, people shouldn't tolerate having Greg Hardy in the UFC or potentially in the UFC. I don't know, guys. It's 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 it's, it's an odd one, but I mean. Yeah, I mean, just keep checking out the website for any updates on on, on what might happen and. Um, don't be afraid to give the UFC some backlash over over it. Um, give the story a read about Greg Hardy. It'll probably open your eyes a little bit. Like I say, I'm all for second chances here and there, but it's all circumstantial. And in the case of Greg Hardy, I I I, I can't get on board. I just can't. I just can't. But um, yeah, I guess guys, really to to wrap up. Thank you so much for watching these videos. Subscribing to the YouTube channel. There'll be plenty more video logs along the way with various other bits and pieces or what have you um keep an eye out uh on the site the on the twitter for the, the podcast is going to drop in a couple of days going to go through usc 227 talking about all the world of mixed martial arts and the ever-changing landscape that we seem to find ourselves in and i guess until next time guys enjoy the rest of your week enjoy our weekend and enjoy the fights